Hey guys, Galusia here, and today I'm bringing you my first look at the Civilization V expansion, Gods and Kings. And first off, I wanted to see if I could spot all the different uh, civilizations that have been added. So right away we have Attila the Huns. Uh, da, 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 da. They have horse archers, a battering ram. Interesting, I like the battering ram. I'm going to butcher the hell out of that. Bodica? Bodica? I like the I like Celts though. That's pretty sick. Warriors, special building, plus one faith. Yeah, now we're dealing with faith. So anyway, uh, Dido. Ah. So we got Dido. Who else we got? I'm not sure who I want to use yet. Gustavus Adolphus, Swedish. Jeez, they added a ton of people. Combat bonus, plus 20% when fighting units in a civilization with more cities than Ethiopia. Da-da-da-da-da. Looking for new people, looking for... Ah. Really? Teresa? Diplomatic marriage. Same going at the end. And they added a ton of people. Here's another one. The Mayans. Nice. Uh, I guess this is a new one then too. Yeah, this is a new one. Or not? Well, no, it's not new, but they changed his thing because now it has food, culture, and faith from friendly and city states. We're definitely going to be looking really hard. Another new one at the faith of this. So <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff added. Oh, they added the Netherlands. Oh, good. Uh, I know somebody that'll be happy to hear that they added the Netherlands. All right. So I I guess I'll just start at the top as far as the new people go. So I'll start with the Huns. Uh, raise cities at double speed. Borrow city names from other in-game civs. Start with animal husbandry technology. Plus one production per pasture. And they have horse archers and a battering ram, which I find all of that to be interesting. Uh, the rest of this can all be standard. Advanced setup. I like to turn off. Uh, I like to make it quick combat because later in the game when there's a million things on screen, it just makes it take way too long. It's not that like my computer can't handle it, obviously, or whatever. I'm going to listen to this. To greet you, great Attila. Grand warrior and ruler of the Hunnic Empire. Mm. Together with your brother Blader, you expanded the boundaries of your empire, becoming the most powerful and frightening force of the 5th century. Yeah. You bowed the Eastern Roman emperors to your will and took kingdom after kingdom along the Danube and Nisava rivers. Mm -hmm. As the sovereign ruler of the Huns, you marched your army across Europe into Gaul, planning to extend your already impressive lands all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. Your untimely death led to the quick disintegration and downfall of your empire. Mm. But your name and deeds have created an everlasting legacy for your people. Nice. I really like the history that you get <clears throat> with these games because it's like the actual history of these people. It's really cool. You get to actually learn something along with it. So, uh, we're definitely, like I said, we're going to be talking about all the differences as we kind of go along. Um, it's wicked sick that you start with animal husbandry. And as you can see, I'm surrounded by animals, so uh, it's a good start for me being who I am. Attila's court. I like it. And we already found a ruin. Sweet. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I've noticed that changed even before the expansion came out, right? So there was a patch that came out a few days ago because uh, this game was added to the... Um, better get trapping, huh? This game was added to the um, <clears throat> Steam Workshop. So, and, th and when that happened, there was a lot of texture updates. And uh, that was the first thing I noticed. So, they changed the texture for advanced technology. Look at that. We got mining already. Man, we are on the ball with technology. Um, they, they changed the texture for uh, trading posts. And I think they look a lot better now. And it was a general overall improvement with all tile improvement textures, like farms and mines and all that stuff. Because what happens with, <clears throat> excuse me, with farms and mines and stuff, is especially farms, is that sometimes if the 
land wasn't totally flat like this, if there was some kind of hill or some type of obstruction, that it wouldn't quite always display it properly. And you wouldn't actually... You knew the farm was there, but it wouldn't actually really show you the farm properly. It wouldn't look quite right. So... Uh, and I noticed that I haven't seen any problems with the textures since the update. So it looks like they fixed it so that the farms actually appear the way that they're supposed to appear. Nice, another ruin. And, um, yeah, they just generally squared that away so that it was... All the textures seem to blend better. Like, where a farm and a mine, like, meet up together. There's a clear distinction between the two of them, and, and you can tell what's going on. Ooh, I like culture bonuses early. Yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah, I think they, they definitely improved the textures before this expansion even came out. And like I said, they did some minor changes to the textures. They added some sound effects. Uh, like, uh, if you do a deal with another civilization and your people like that deal, or if it's a good deal or whatever, then they cheer. And if it's a bad deal, then they boo. <laughs> so they added that. And then, I, if I'm not mistaken, I'll swear up and down... It's interesting. It's all the same social pot. I was going to see if there was any... Ah, okay, there is changes to it, because this piety has more to go with faith now. I'm not even sure what impact faith is going to have on anything yet, so I don't even know, like, how to... I don't know how much I need faith or how much I want faith. Like, I, I know there's a new type of victory. You can get a faith victory now, but I'm kind of going into this blind just because I want to enjoy the game for what it is. I think I'm going to start with Liberty, which I wouldn't normally start with. Normally, normally you would want to go with Tradition, but I think I'm going to start with Liberty, because I'm going to look to rapidly expand with Attila. So anyway, um, so yeah, they made some changes beforehand, and uh, I think they might have added some music or something. I, I'll swear up and down that I heard music I've never heard before when my... Uh, when I was in a bad place, I had a bunch of people coming in on me and stuff, and it looked like it was the end of that gameplay. Um, there was, like, some really somber music playing, just, like, very, like, ominous and stuff. So, um, definitely a few things changed or added or whatever before it even came out. And then, uh, now that it's out, obviously... We have this giant addition of uh, civilizations right off the bat. That's why I wanted to start recording right there so we could see how many civilizations were added. Uh, that definitely makes it worth the expansion just in that itself. Because that's a ton of expansions, a ton of new people to uh, try to play as. Actually, while I'm thinking of it, <clears throat> I'm going to open up my, uh, my uh, technology tree here to see if there's any new technologies added. Ah, there is. Drama and poetry which that was given to you before in philosophy now it's down here and it added an amphitheater which is one another uh culture building so that's what's up that's new petra i don't know what a petra is i'm not going to specifically look at every single one i'm mostly just looking for new things altogether guilds they changed the name of it but the all four of those things used to come in uh Along with, well, shoot, now I'm trying to remember. <laughs> there was, some of it, I forget, some of this would have been with currency, and some of it, I think, was in banking. I think they kind of made a middle ground now for money-based uh, technology. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, that's all the same. Although, this whole overlay is slightly tweaked and different and a lot of these things are in different positions like this is different the way these are tripled up the printing press used to be in the middle and the metallurgy would have been over here chemistry would have been up one above something else like everything seems to be positioned slightly different um i'm interested to see how it goes as far as the technology because there's um see what they did the flight see triplane great war bomber interesting Railroad actually gives you something besides the ability to build railroads. Interesting. Wow, that thing adds a lot. Adds happiness and culture. Combustion. Oh, wow. Look at the land ship, quote-unquote, instead of a tank. And then combined arms gives you a tank. So now there's a precursor to the tank, which makes sense because there were older 
tanks, machine gun. Look at this. There's a whole bunch of like soldier stuff added. I like it. So then radar gives us the bombers and the fighters. I like that there's a, a, an early plane too. When you learn flight, instead of getting fighters right away or something like that, you get this old school triplane. That's really cool. Uh, great firewall. Oh, yeah, because they added spies to the game. So the firewall stops spies. I'm really interested to see how we can implement spies. To uh, They have spies in the PlayStation 3 civilization, and they're pretty useful. Bomb shelter. Reduce population loss from nuclear attacks. Oh. It looks like they did a lot to move. Wow, you can make the Hubble Space Telescope. That's amazing. That's awesome. It looks like they did a lot to... Uh, they changed all the, a lot of, this is, all this lineup is completely different now, the way that they've changed these trees. And honestly, it looks like it would be a little more difficult to get a science victory now, because it's still down on this tree, but there's a lot of stuff. I, I think, I, I think they, because to be honest with you, the science victory is always the easiest victory for me to get. I think they've kind of tweaked that a little bit, because it looks like it may be harder to obtain. I don't even, but like I said, I don't even know what a faith victory is, so... I have no faith, though. Ten faith is the minimum required to found the next religion, Pantheon. If you wish to found a Pantheon, you must do it before there is an enhanced religion in the game. Though you may always form one uh, if there have not been whoop, as many Pantheons as the maximum number of religions. Religions that still can be founded, five. Okay, so at some point we're going to start generating faith and then eventually we'll form a religion and then we'll see how those religions affect our gameplay and so on and so forth evidence of recent activities reveal the locations of blah 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 looks like i'm on a pretty small continent kind of by myself well maybe i spoke too soon maybe i'm on a peninsula or something because there's barbarians way over there and way over there so who knows so yeah, they definitely tweaked. It looks like they they probably went ahead and tweaked just about everything. Oh, another ruin. I am winning today. Um, And there's definitely... It's like the most minor changes ever. Like this, like silk in a forest tile, it looks slightly different than it used to. Like, And it's just like the littlest tweaks that I think in the grand scheme when it's all put together makes the difference. Ooh, advanced weaponry. I love when scouts get advanced weaponry because they still have their movement bonus, but now they're archers. So they're just they're archers with a movement bonus. It's freaking winning. I, I absolutely love. I love. I like that way more than when a warrior does because they just become pikemen and they it doesn't like. There's no. It's just like having a regular pikeman, but that's a special archer that you could never otherwise have in the game. That's always good times. I will probably actually make these two meet here so I can take out those barbarians because that camp is really close to home. I think it's interesting that because of the history of Attila that you don't have your own civilization city names, that you take names from other civilizations. That's an interesting adaptation to... Uh, there's, there's so many interesting things. This is going to be a good... I'm going to do an entire playthrough. I don't know if I said that before, but I mean that's the best way that I know how to explain the game. We're just going to do a whole playthrough uh, of Civ, and we're just going to enjoy this... Wow! 29 damage! Obviously, they've tweaked the HP in this game, because I just did 29 damage for him. That's really good. I'm happy with that, because before... Say you had, like, a... Uh, you got the most powerful military unit in the game. Oh, wow, now they have advanced technology. Jeez. Okay, so Pottery gives us a granary which is always given us, and a shrine, which is how we get faith. Very interesting. Allows cities to build a granary, which provides food, helping the cities grow larger. Also allows you to build a shrine, the first faith-producing building in the game. There you go. So there's our first faith thing. I like that because before, the most powerful military unit in the game, the giant menacing robot thing, uh, he had 150 uh, well, 15 health. And which means if you had 15 archers, old school regular archers, you could take them down because any enemy is guaranteed to do some kind of damage. So with it, with the hit points being 15, the minimum damage was one, and you could take out a giant menacing robot with archers, and that seems silly. If they change the HP, 
Like right there, like if I had attacked him in old Civ, maybe that would have said negative three for the damage, but it didn't. It said negative twenty nine, which means that's that you know in relation to old Civ five that point one difference that you know makes a difference in the grand scheme of things. I like that they made the um, they added a zero basically to the hit points of everything. Okay, trapping still does the same stuff that it's always done. That's one thing I'm really interested in is as we do the technology, I'll look at it specifically to see what's changing and what's being added. Very, uh, very interesting. Okay, did 20 damage. Wait, didn't, uh... Oh, never mind. They're not going to be able to attack this turn. New research. Okay, well, we did trapping, which we definitely needed because of where we are. And now I would definitely say sailing since there's fish right there. Gives us the work boat like it always did, the trireme like it always did, and fishing. So nothing's changed there. Next turn. I'm very excited. I don't know if you guys are excited, but I'm freaking excited. See, look at that, negative 22. I love that, because honestly, he probably would have done negative 2 all three shots, but he didn't. Some of them were slightly higher than, than 2. Oh, put the smack. How did I not take that guy out of full health? Well, he's, he, well, he's in, I guess, because he's dug in but still wow that that is surprising I, I would have thought for sure that that would have been the end of it oh for the love of frigger okay well let me just do that at least so we can get the encampment but now there's a whole of course he had to spit out a fresh unit right as i was getting ready to wipe him out why wouldn't he hang in there warriors i don't have the resources to make another one of you yet see look now archers without moving penalties so i can attack them this turn or no because oh god because the river and the forests and everything else that's in my freaking way. Um, well, I don't want to put them in harm's way. Oh, I'll put them. I'll move them into position, damn it. Ah. Very slight loss there. Okay. So I, I, I'm tempted to do a shrine just because I really want to get it going. But uh, a granary is definitely more important because I want to build my population. Actually, before I even do that... Let me get a worker going, because I have all these techs, and I can, like, start working the tiles around me, but I don't have anybody to do that. And I think that is the most important thing I can do, so that we can get production up and so on and so forth. So let's get a worker, then a greenery, then a shrine. Well, and a workboat. Oh, damn, I got a lot to do, don't I? Okay, I need to get this guy in a position to attack. There we go. Okay, this is probably just about a stalemate, but... Whew! He's hurting. This... Oh. Oh! Oh, I like the new symbol for when you have someone you can attack. Well, thankfully, I don't have any workers, so there's no one I have to make run and hide. I gotta say, this is extremely awesome. It's all these, like I was saying before, it's all these minor changes that I'm gonna only move him one tile because I don't want to get too close to him. It's all these minor changes that, when they add up, become amazing. Okay, the... Oh, they moved that. Okay, they changed this because it used to be the very first thing over here would have given you the uh, settlers. There also used to be more stuff in this tree, actually. So it would be faster to finish off Liberty. But yeah, it used to be you would get a settler, and that's why I like using Liberty, because you get a settler, like, right off the bat. Um, so I'll probably just do this so I can get a settler the next time I do a thing. Plus, it increases your production. So as you can see... <clears throat> the production of a of the workers went from 15 turns to 12 turns, so that's always good. And he gets a promotion. Um, I'm tempted to heal him since he's so freaking low on health, but I don't know. I like I hate using promotions for healing, and I don't think he's gonna die. I think I can just take that warrior out and let him heal naturally, and then send him out to get to more work. So. I'm going to take a chance and just level him up, and then hopefully he'll he'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, because we can finish it. But now i got to figure out where he came from, because he came from the left. Oh, yeah, there's the encampment over there. Herp or derp. I forgot all about that one. So that's my next goal, because I can't have dudes wandering in that are going to be uh, hurting my workers. So we'll heal him up and uh, move on to there. So, so far we've already discovered a lot of uh, changes, a lot of things going on here. I'm, 
I am honestly impressed with it already, and it's just begun. So uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing this series, but this has been long enough for the initial episode. So hopefully you guys will stick with me so we can discover all the changes together. Very exciting. And I will see you guys next episode.